There's a fish. There's a, oh, look at that jump. Oh, that's a big steelhead. That's a big steelhead. Oh, another oh. Oh, dude. Like four jumps in a row. Okay, that one I think is a little bit bigger. Welcome to the Canada Steelhead Edition here on Die Hard Fishing. If you don't follow the channel, my name is Adam. I do a lot of fishing down in the Bay Area. That's where I'm based. A lot of kayak fishing, halibut, salmon, lingcod, rockfish. Basically, you know, all the inshore species we can catch here on the California coast. But lately I've been getting real, in, real big into steelhead fishing. We're the big steelhead guy lately. And I've caught a few steelhead, caught my first one. I actually did a, another video like this one, a little bit longer version of me chasing my first Bay Area steelhead. But in this video, I'm doing something totally different, going to a totally different country, a river that I've never been to, a country that I've never been to, and trying to catch one of these elusive steelhead. I don't know if I've ever seen the airport this empty before. Probably because I'm flying out at like 6 a.m. Well, I'll see you guys on the plane. So Monday morning, got my flight on my flight at 7.30 a.m. Arrived in Canada, I think around 9.30, 10 o'clock once I got through customs and everything. Got my rental car and immediately started driving straight out to the river. And you know, I was getting out of the uh, city, going out onto the highway to get out to the river. And I was just going with the flow of traffic. I get on the highway and, it, and I'm just like blown away. Like all of a sudden, I'm like, "Whoa, I'm going like 90 here." It's like these people drive fast in Canada. But then I realize we're in Canada. This is kilometers per hour, not miles per hour. All right, we've made it to Canada. It was a little tough getting through the airport and everything. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, or maybe it's not. I don't know. None of my my internet connection doesn't work out here. I couldn't figure out what was the problem. But anyways, we made it. It's amazing how dependent we are on our phones, so it's kind of nice to figure it out without the phone. And we have made it to the river here. I don't have any of my fishing stuff. I just wanted to come take a look, and man, this river looks awesome. Let me show you guys. I'm trying to get down there. All right, there you go. Now you can see a little better. That river looks really nice. I mean, I'm sure there's fish in there. It's definitely bigger than most of the rivers, or if any of the rivers that I've fished before, so that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but. Hey, it's a challenge. We're out here in Canada. No idea what I'm doing out here. I'm just going to explore for the next two days. Well, the next 48 hours, I guess. It's going to be the span of three days. So I'm going to fish this evening, tomorrow, all day, and then the day after that in the morning. So 48 hour mission, see if I can catch a Canadian steelhead. But I got a lot of things to do first. I got to stop by the tackle shop to get my Canadian fishing license and just kind of see what the deal is out here. And uh, I'm staying at an interesting place. I'll show you guys in a bit here, but yeah, first things first, we're gonna try to get all that stuff done so we can do a little bit of fishing this evening before the sun goes down. It's probably about one o'clock now, something like that. So gotta get moving. All right, well, change of plans. Unfortunately, the licensing system for all, I guess, all of Canada right now is not working right now. It's all online and I can't buy a license. So I'm gonna have to wait a little bit. I'm gonna do some grocery shopping because I'm gonna get some food. I'm gonna go check into this Airbnb that I'm staying at and I'll show you guys that place because I wanted to do that anyways. But, um, so yeah, that's the plan for now. Hopefully it gets back up and running in the next hour or two so I can did some fishing in before the day's over, but we're kind of in uh, limbo right now. And check this out. So you would think, I don't know if you guys can see that. This is like a storage unit, but actually if we come around the corner here, there's a door. And if we open this door, this is where I'm gonna be staying for the next couple of days. So this might be the only time that I'm here when it's actually light out. So I thought I'd show you guys from the outside. Anyways, we got a little couch, folds into a bed. I'll show you more of the inside later, but you can see from the outside. It's literally a storage unit that they've turned into this little tiny house. I think this is like a thing. We're just in the middle of a big field of like, it looks like Christmas trees. I'm not really sure if that's what they sell them as, but anyways, you can see, got a nice view of the mountains and the fields and the clouds and everything out there. And then this is everything I need in here. Kitchen, bathroom, shower. Here we go. This is like a nicer shower than I have at my home. 
All right, so now I gotta figure out this license thing. So hopefully this online system is working now, because if not, then I'm kind of screwed. I don't even think I can go fishing because I don't have a license. Probably should have done this beforehand. So future reference, if you guys ever go somewhere new, it's best practice to get your license before you go. I probably should have done that, but I thought I could have got it when I got here, so. All right, good news, got the license. So the licensing here in Canada is pretty similar to the way we have back home. You need your general freshwater. Well, I guess that's a little bit different. They have different licenses for freshwater and saltwater. So you need your general freshwater license because we'll be fishing in freshwater. And then you also need a steelhead report card similar to what we have back in California. I think back in California, I want to say it's less than $20. I don't know the number exactly. Maybe I'll check back and put it here. But here in Canada, it's $60. So there's a reason why California doesn't have as many steelhead as we do as they do up in here in Canada. It's because it's not as much funding because the licenses are so cheap. So I know everyone complains about the licensing back home, but if you want more fish, it might be worth it to up that license cost. But anyways, that's just what I thought. And... On that note, let's get out and go try to catch one of these guys. All right, let's go get it. Finally got out to the river. I think it was probably about 3 or 4 p.m. by the time I got out here. Fished a couple spots, tried one. Water was just like super muddy and it was kind of downstream where the flow was fairly high. I didn't really like that. I just started touring the, the stretch of the river that I was able to fish. There's a road that follows the uh, the river up and down. And so I literally just drove the entire stretch of road watching the river, seeing you know if I see fishermen fishing here and there. And then I finally got to one spot pretty far upstream um, where I saw a couple of people fishing and it looked, looked nice. So there's a nice little hole out there. So I decided I'd stop there and fish there for the evening. All right, so I just pretty much drove the entire stretch of river here and um, didn't see much. I mean, I was trying to see if there's a lot of people congregated in one little area. I didn't really see that. And yeah, basically just looking for some good structure, maybe some good deep holes where these fish might be holding. And I mean, it's tough to do, go fish a river by yourself, let it alone do that in 48 hours. So we'll see. Today is a little bit of an exploratory mission. Up here, I see quite a few people fishing here. So this is probably a popular area, but also probably holds fish at some point in the day. So we'll go fish it, try a little bit and see, see how it goes. All right, so common courtesy when you're coming up to a river and there's people fishing at it already, is you never want to low hole them. What that means is you don't want to stick below, right below them in the hole. And the idea between that is the fish are all coming up river. So if you go stick, you know, you cut right in at the bottom of the hole, then, oh, that guy just hooked up. No, never mind the snag. Anyways, the idea is that is you don't want to stick right at the bottom of the hole because then you're going to catch all the fish before they get to everyone else. So if these people are already fishing the river, best practice is to go upstream with them. That's a wrap for day one back at the tiny house. Picked up some Tim Hortons on the way home. Seems to be a thing here in Canada. I feel like on the way from the river to here, it's probably about 15 minute drive, maybe 20 minutes. And I think I saw like four or five of these. So they're all over the place. Time to see what all the craze is about. Not too bad. So anyways, no fish for day one, but it was more of an exploratory mission today. I'm going to tap some leaders, get everything set up for tomorrow, and get a game plan so we can attack these fish tomorrow. Hopefully find us a nice big steelhead. So we'll see you guys in the morning. So I fished there for the evening. Water looked pretty good. There's a couple of fish in there. Actually, one guy caught, I think it was a baby steelhead, maybe like, you know, 12 to 15 inch or something like that. Um, nice fish, but, you know, we're looking for big steelhead. So 
Unfortunately, we didn't find any there, but it was nice to have kind of one spot in my memory that I could go back to. So I went back home, rested, did a little bit of research and got a game plan for the following day. The following day was Tuesday. That's the day I was gonna be fishing all day, sun up to sunrise to try and just hunt down these elusive steelhead. Oh, also I talked to a few guys along the way and all the local guys that I talked to, it seemed like they were all saying the same thing. The fish returns this year. Normally this river fish is really good. They have a brood stock program, um, which means there's hatchery fish as well as wild fish. And normally there's, there's a lot of fish to be, be had. People can catch them fairly regularly. But for some reason this year, or what, no one really knows why, or at least no one that I talked to, the return numbers are just way, way down. Just really bad fishing. So, you know, with that in mind, I was kind of, you know, a little worried for the trip. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get one. I think we got everything. Got bait, got the cameras, got my hat. Look at this view. This is what I woke up to this morning. This off. A little bit cold this morning, but perfect weather to go catch us a steelhead. And we're off. All right, just made it to the spot here. The plan for today is to run and gun. We're gonna cover a lot of water. We're actually gonna start in the same spot that we started, or that we fished last evening, because um, this is kind of like the uppermost boundary of where we can fish. So we're gonna start there, fish all the way downriver, Probably don't spend more than an hour in any one spot unless we see something, maybe catch a fish or see someone catch a fish or see one roll or something. Um, and just really try to seek out these steelhead. So when I talk to, you know, it seems like the general consensus on the river is that the steelhead fishing is tough this season. I guess the returns are fairly low compared to normal. I mean, for me, tough steelhead fishing is just normal steelhead fishing. So that's not something out of the ordinary for me. And um, yeah, we're really gonna try and we're really gonna try and hunt down these steelhead today. We're not gonna let them come to us, we're gonna go find them. All right, I don't think this spot's gonna do it. Let's go find another one. My thought process was that since the fishing, there's not that many fish in the river, according to all the local guys, I'm gonna need to really search them out. I can't just pick one hole and plug away and hope that I find one in there. I gotta move, run and gun, and it's just me by myself. It'd be nice if I had a team of people that I could, you know, we could hit holes fairly efficiently and, and quickly. But for me, I needed to, I need to be efficient and I need to be smart about my moves. So, you know, I was running and gunning, hit a few more spots, nothing, nothing, nothing. I just realized walking through the woods out here by myself, probably should have brought some bear spray. Didn't really think of that beforehand, but I'm always watching my back. And then I finally got to this one spot, I think it was probably around noon, something like that. Um, I think it was probably like my third or fourth spot in, I don't really remember. I got one, I got some. Not big. Yeah, I think it's a little trout. Yeah, a little trout. I don't know if it's a, like in Oregon, when I was fishing with the addicted guys, they had the little cutthroat trout, but I'm not sure if they have those here. I think this is just a regular old rainbow. So I don't really know much about these, but I'm pretty sure these are just wild rainbows out here in this river. I'm not sure if they ever make it to the ocean. I think if they do, then once that happens, they become technically a steelhead. So this one could, maybe it's just a baby steelhead just growing up here in the river. And then once it gets big enough, it'll head out to the ocean. I'm not really sure. Or maybe it could just be a rainbow. It just sits here in the river, lives out its life in the freshwater. We'll give them a proper release here. Right in the beak. 
Everything is barbless here, so that hook will come right out. No problem. There he goes. Let me show you what I'm using here. So I got my normal float set up. You've already seen that many times. But what I have on the end here is a little jig head. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. So you can see it's got that pink head right there. Barbless, as I said, everything out here is barbless. And then I just tipped it with this piece of cooked shrimp. So, you know, it seems weird to me fishing for freshwater fish with shrimp, a saltwater uh, shellfish. But if you think about it, steelhead are in the ocean at some point in their life. And I'm sure when they get into the estuaries, um, they eat different kinds of shrimp and other stuff like that. So it seems like it's a popular bait for steelhead up and down the uh, west coast here. But anyways, that's what got him. And then this jig head is made by a company called Jig Geek. Not sponsored or anything, but I did talk to them. They're a local company here in Canada and they sent me a bunch of gear and I'm happy that I got one on his jig head. Pretty cool stuff. I actually got it from another YouTube video. I saw someone else using the same jig head, so. This is where I got him. So there's like a lot of fast moving water. I thought maybe there was to be sufficient that slow water kind of on this side of it. Didn't get anything there, but I did get him right over here. And right here, it's weird. The water is like, it's swirling. So it on that side, it's going that way. And then right next to me, it's kind of going back upstream. It's really weird. I guess it's just the way the topography of the riverbed is. It's got the water kind of going in a little whirlpool here. This was a one fish wonder. No more in this hole. Finally, I caught something. My first fish of the trip. It wasn't the steelhead that I was looking for, but it was a nice little rainbow trout. It ate my little jig with a little piece of shrimp on there, right in this little like really slow moving water. It was basically just sitting. And then I saw my bobber go tick, 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 boom, set the hook and it was, it was a little rainbow trout. I was really happy about that. Finally, you know, I caught something. Honestly, at that point, I was thinking, man, this, this could possibly be the only fish of my entire trip just based off of, you know, the rope reports from the locals and just steelhead fishing in general. It's not like you can't expect to just come out to a brand new river in a brand new area and just catch a steelhead. Even seasoned veteran steelhead fishermen, like you just can't expect that. You got to know the rivers to, to know where these fish hang out. And then with the low numbers, like the locals are saying, it seemed like all the odds were against me. So anyways, I was stoked on that little trout. I thought maybe that was going to be the only fish in my trip. But unlike the other spots, I fished it for a little bit longer and uh, didn't really find anything. So I decided, uh, let's head out, keep running, gunning, stick to the game plan and find a new spot. However, on my way out, I was walking back towards the car and I saw this little spot. So there's the river and then there was a little like gravel, like sand, almost like a sandbar in the middle of the river. And the water was kind of flowing over it. And there was a little trench right before the bank. And then on the other side, there was like a deep hole. I mean, a lot of fast moving water moving through there. But this little trench right here, I was thinking, I don't really know. Maybe there's a steelhead sitting in there just kind of resting because right below that there was a, a big rapid. So I thought maybe the fish shot through that rapids, they'd sit in that little trench right there kind of resting, getting enough energy to go farther upstream. So anyways, I cast it in there a couple of times. One time a bobber ticked down, I thought maybe it looked like a bite, but who knows? Keep throwing. The next cast, boom, it's tick, 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 ticking down. It's ticking over that gravel, that little sandbar. Boom, 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 boom. And then boom, right in that trench, my bobber drains. Oh, that's a steelhead. That's a steelhead. That's a steelhead. Oh, that's a steelhead. I was not expecting that. I was literally on my way out of here. No way. That's a steelhead. This is the same little spot from the rainbow. And I was literally on my way out. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna throw a couple of casts in this little pocket here. It doesn't look that great, but maybe there'll be a fish in it. And what do you know? There was a nice, that's a nice fish too. So we're using barbless hooks here. So you never know what could happen here, but 
seems like we survived the first couple runs. He made a nice jump for it. I don't know if the GoPro caught it or not, but. The bobber went down and I wasn't even really sure. I thought he was just ticking the bottom. But actually on the cast before that, the same little thing happened, a little tick there. And it kind of looked like a bite. I wasn't really sure, but uh, yeah, I threw it back in there and obviously it was a fish. That was a good, it's a good sized steelhead too. I got a glimpse of him when he jumped fully out of the water. I just got to coax him up, up here into this calmer water. So I can't access down there. It's too, there's like wood up, all up on the bank and everything. We gotta somehow get him to come upstream. Same setup as that trout. Bobber with a little piece of shrimp on the jig head. Oh man, I wanna get my hands on this one. Oh. I wanna try to I try to get him up as smoothly as possible. The more jerky it is, the more likely he is to freak out and start jumping. And you know, better chance of him spitting that hook when that happens. Oh, it's a nice fish. Nice fish. Oh man, I don't like those head shakes though. He keeps shaking his head, trying to spit that hook. Hopefully that jig got him pinned good in the, hopefully in the jaw. Wait, right, here he comes, here he comes. Now we're getting him. Kind of. Kind of. Where do I want to land him? I guess I'll land him up here. If I can. Oh yeah, look at that flash in the water. It's so cool to see them, especially when the water's so clear. This is pretty, pretty clear water, um, but it's so cool to see them swimming in that water. Oh, no, 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 stay out of the strong current. Stay out of that strong current. Here, come back here, come back over here. Come back over here. Oh yeah, okay, come on. Once he sees me, he's gonna freak out and probably swim over to the other side. Oh, it's a hatchery fish. We could keep this one. I think. Looks like a hatchery. Maybe not, it might be a wild fish, can't tell. When I was fishing with those addicted guys, they're so good at seeing the fish in the water and being able to see if it has the adipose fin or not, but it's still tough for me to tell. Okay. I want to try to get him up here. I can see the jig head. Try to get him up here. Keep on coming. Don't rub on those rocks. No, 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 stay out of those sticks. Stay out of the sticks. Oh, it's a wild fish, wild fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's by far my biggest steelhead ever. Not by far, but it is my biggest one for sure. Big wild buck. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a tank. That is a tank. Okay. Gotta keep him in the water here. Dude, that's a nice fish. Look at that. That is what I came to Canada for right there. Big wild buck. You can see it's kind of starting to develop that pink line right here down the middle and then also another one down below. So it's probably been in the river for a little while, but not super long, still nice and healthy. You can see right here, this top fin fully intact. A lot of times the hatchery fish will be a little bit beat up here, 
but the wild fish usually have that nice strong upper dorsal fin right there but yeah just a really nice buck here let's get a quick measurement we're in canada so might as well do as the canadians do measure in centimeters 70 probably about 72 centimeters something like that 72 73 somewhere in that range awesome fish and it's got that jig head pinned right in the top of the mouth that jig head worked flawlessly even with the barbless hook that guy stuck pretty good i don't think he was going to come off hopefully this fish spawns this year makes plenty of steelhead for future generations there he goes off of the kick bingo a couple things i wanted to talk a little bit to the camera well first i wanted to get that fish on his way because you always want to minimize the amount of you know picture time and everything is possible i always want to show you guys so you guys have a good look at him but that health of the fish is obviously a priority so i wanted to get him back out there but a couple of things i wanted to mention is this river has a broodstock program um so every year uh they take in i don't know what the number is a handful of wild fish they get volunteers to come out here and uh, when they get a nice wild fish they'll tube it keep it alive and then a truck from the uh i don't know what it is here department of fishing game canadian version or whatever uh, the truck will come by pick them up and take them to the hatchery and then they'll spawn those wild fish to create a number of you know hatchery fish to clip all the fins of those release them into the river and then those are the fish that you can come back and catch to keep so um, that was a wild fish so you can't keep that one um, but there are hatchery fish in here with that clip fin um, that you're allowed to keep if you so choose but anyways that was awesome awesome fight you know he had to i had to pull him up from there's a huge rapid down below if you went down that rapid i would have been toast well i would have been sprinting down the river hobbling around probably would have fell in but chances are i wouldn't have landed that fish but anyways we got him up here up in this little bit calmer water and then finessed him in here a good little spot here for us to do their little talking show him off to the camera and then get him on his way but but yeah awesome fight that's what i came to canada for couldn't ask for anything more i feel like with that fish it's crazy how a steelhead fishing one fish turns a whole trip from you know kind of a letdown to a major success so like i was saying initially i was, I was thinking man this trout's going to be the only fish of this whole trip so once i bang that steelhead right you know probably like five to ten minutes after the trout oh man i was just stoked made the trip basically i was like oh got one I can check it off i can relax all the uh, stress is off now i basically i did it now i'm just gonna fish out and see see what happens not not, not really worried about if i catch them or not so fish that same spot for a little bit longer didn't catch anything else and then started moving back to the car and then also on the way back to the car just a little bit closer to the car i found another deep hole so on this one it was a sandbar, but it was actually out of the water. So, there, or more like a gravel bar this time. The first one was more like a sandbar, but it was underwater. So the, the water was like fairly shallow and then it dipped down into deep water. This one was totally out of the water. So there's a fast moving current with a lot of water on one side, a fast moving current with a decent amount of water on the other side. And then they kind of funnel back together to form one uniform river, I guess. So in that spot, I was just kind of flipping it out. Same bait, same stuff, just flipping it out. I flipped one cast super shallow nothing and then it in this little like pocket fairly close to me on, on my side of the bank it was pretty deep there i want to say it's like probably it might even be 15 feet 10 to 15 feet something like that um, i flipped it in there or oh no sorry I, I lengthened up my lead or my bobber stop so that the the bait would drop down a little bit farther so i lengthened it up before my cast flipped it in there this is mind you this is my second cast in this spot flipped it in there and like I don't know it probably ticked down maybe five feet so pretty soon after the cast and the bobber just like kind of went under the water i was like oh man i went too deep got snagged up but when you're steelhead fishing the bobber goes down and never hurts to set the hook so i gave it a good jerk and it was it was firm it was like a good thud i was like oh man i thought for sure it was a rock
Oh, fish. Fish. Second cast through there. I thought I was hung up, but it's a fish. Fish, fish, fish. Wow, I thought that was a snag for sure. I casted it once, and then I uh, didn't get anything. And then I deepened up my bobber. So I thought, ah, we'll just try it. It's pretty deep right here. And uh, I thought for sure I had gotten too deep and I hung up on the bottom, but that's a fish. That's definitely a fish. I don't know how big it is. It's hard to tell because I'm in such fast current and never came to the surface. Um, but I'm not really sure. Oh, big flash, big flash, big flash. Might have found a good little spot here. This isn't too far from where I caught the last one. This one's gonna be a little bit of a tricky landing. There's not a lot of slow moving water near here. I think I'm gonna have to chase him downstream a little bit. That was awesome. I was not expecting another one so quickly. This is where it would be nice to have a net, a net man. But unfortunately, we don't. Oh, nice. This one's a little more chrome, I think. Another wild fish. Not the best place to land them, but we're just gonna make it, make it work. Oh, you know what? I don't think this is a steelhead. Is that a steelhead? I don't think this is a steelhead. I'm not really sure what this is. Well, one of the beauties of fishing in a new place, you get to catch new fish. And sometimes you don't even know what it is. Like this one. So it looks to me like some kind of trout. I'm not sure if this is like a, either like a bull trout or a Dolly Varden something. I'm not sure. You guys are gonna have to let me know. I'm, I'll look it up later. Never caught one of these before. Whatever it is. They don't have these in California, that's for sure. Fish ID. Some kind of trout, I assume, but I'm not sure. It's not a steelhead, that's for sure. Got some interesting, like, yellow spots on there. It's like a green top. Thought it was a steelhead the whole time I was fighting him. But came up, and this is definitely not a steelhead. Same setup as before. Some kind of little trout, or big trout. Probably like 25, 26 inches. Not too much shorter than that steelhead I caught, but it is definitely skinnier. Awesome fish, regardless. Regardless if it's a steelhead or a trout or whatever. All right, go ahead. Boom, bada bing, bada boom. Checking species off the list. We got trout, rainbow trout, we got steelhead. And then whatever the heck that mystery fish was. At that time, I didn't know what what kind of species it was. It looked like a trout of some sort, um, but I'd never, they look familiar. I'm sure I've seen them before, but we don't have these down in California. Um, and I just didn't know what species it was. But later I found out it was a bull trout, which is fairly similar to a steelhead um, or another trout species. They can go to the ocean, they can come back into the river. I have a feeling these ones in here are probably resident, but I don't, I don't really know for sure. Uh, but anyways, new species, stoked, super stoked. I already got a rainbow trout, a steelhead, and this now bull trout, new new fish species that I never caught before. It's always fun to catch a new species, but um, yeah, that, that was awesome. I, again, just so excited. I, I didn't expect that at all, especially in this spot. This was like a weird, I don't know. It just didn't look like a steelhead spot. So I was surprised to catch a fish in there. So anyways, fished it a little longer, was working this hole kind of up and down a little bit. And then finally threw one cast in there, 
nothing special, but let it tick down. I let it get a little bit farther down maybe. Maybe that's what, what, what the difference was, but got it down and boom, that bobber sank. I set the hook. I knew this one was a fish. Immediately when I set the hook, felt the head shakes and this fish just went insane. There's a fish. There's a, oh, look at that jump. Oh, that's a big steelhead. That's a big steelhead. Oh, another oh, 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 dude. Like four jumps in a row. Okay, that one I think is a little bit bigger. We might have to chase this one. He just went way downstream on us. Oh my God. We definitely found the pot of fish. So I think we got to work this area. You know, I, I feel like there's probably a, quite a few fish in this little area here. A lot of times these steelhead, when they're coming up the river, they'll come up in packs. They're not just like onesie twosies. Sometimes there'll be a big pack of like 10 of them or even more. So it's quite possible that this area has just a big school of fish. Yeah, I really hope the GoPro picked it up because man, that fish went airborne like three or four times. I have a feeling this is a steelhead. This is, oh, another one. Another big jump. Oh, another big jump. Oh, jeez. Yeah, this is, this is a pretty good sized fish. It's a little more colored up than the last one, which means it's been in the river for a little bit longer but I think it's a little bit bigger. And I'm trying to keep his head up because he's swimming right down there with the rocks and I don't want him to rub me on any of those. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. No, no, not the rocks, not the rocks. I think we gotta get right down next to the water here. Get that angle. Look at that, you can see the, the, oh, the flash. Look at that, look at that fish. And it's probably about the same size as the last one. Maybe a little bit bigger. I don't know, this one was definitely more acrobatic, that's for sure. This one's got the colors, got all the colors. Let's see if we can get him into this little calm spot. Oh, there he goes again. He's not done. Oh, not done. Not done at all. Look at that. Okay. Let's see if we can get over here. All right, guys, I'm gonna try to pull him right in here. It'd be nice if I had a cameraman to help me with this operation, but it's not how this operation works. This is a solo mission. Wow. Wow. Look at that fish. This is also what I came to Canada for. That same jig head has caught all four fish so far. I was thinking about switching it up to see if there was something else in this pool, but this thing just seems to be working too well. Can't take it off. Oh, oh. Oh, God. Got him quite tired out. Yes. Look at that. 
<laughs> Look at that fish. So this one, unlike the first steelhead that we got, this one's been in the river for quite a while. Oh, there he goes. Came off. Well, one man operation, that's how it works. All right, well, this, this day couldn't have gone any better. Like I said, the plan was to start upstream, just work our way down until we found that pot of fish. And I really think that's what we did here. I think we found a good little school of fish here. That was another, I think that was another buck. I didn't look at him that closely, but either way, another fish in here. Not too far, maybe like 100 yards downstream, if that, nah, probably even less. Maybe like 50 yards downstream from where I caught the first steelhead and the trout. And then right in the middle of these two is where I caught that other mystery trout. But man, that was awesome. Another good fish, probably around 30 inches. You know, 12, 14 pounds maybe. That one was a little more colored up. So that means that that fish has been in the river a little bit longer. Still another wild fish. Um, but that one's probably getting a little closer to spawning. Um, like that first one that we caught. So, man, that was that one was the best fighter though. That one went went airborne three or four times right at the beginning, at least twice here right at the you know in the middle and towards the end. Man, that was an awesome fight. Awesome, awesome fight. Light tackle. Yeah, that's that's steelhead fish. That's <laughs> those fish are why I came to Canada. I know I keep saying that, but that's literally the reason I came here. That was just uh, amazing. The, the second, literally the first full day fishing in this new river and new country. And I, I feel like I stumbled upon the mega school as far as, you know, the status of the river goes. Went home or went back into town, got some lunch, came back out to fish the evening session because heck, why not? Found a good little school here. Let's see if there's any more fish. And immediately, boom, I started hooking up left and right. I caught another bull trout. I think I caught two more rainbows. And um, yeah, the last rainbow that I caught was actually a hatchery fish. So I'm not sure if that was a um, small baby steelhead that they released fairly soon or if they also are fairly recently, or if they also have hatchery rainbows in here because it's hard to tell the difference when they're that small. Um, basically a steelhead, if you're not familiar, is the same as a rainbow trout. The only difference is the steelhead actually made it to the ocean, whereas the rainbow trout stay in the river so if i had to guess i think that was a baby steelhead but correct me if i'm wrong um, the only reason i know it came from a hatchery is because it had the clipped adipose fin um, and that's the only fish of the whole trip that i caught um, that had you know that that fin clip but it was a hatchery fish all the other steelhead and both of the uh, bull trout that i caught all had the adipose fin so those were all totally wild fish but yeah so that's that's how i finished day two that was that was like an epic day that was, that was pretty crazy that was that was the meat and gravy of this video and the meat and gravy of the whole the whole trip to in total in one day the first full day of me fishing a brand new river i caught two 10 plus pound steelhead i caught two bull trout which are new species i didn't even know they're in this river and i think three rainbows so i mean i can't complain any any fishing day any river that would have been an awesome day it's time to say goodbye to place that I called home for the last couple of nights. The old tiny house. This was pretty nice. I would definitely do that again. Came out the third day, went back to the same spot and you know, just probably one of the reasons why I love steelhead fishing and why it's such a challenge to catch these fish. Came back out to the same spot, same, used the same tactics, same baits, same everything and didn't even get a bite. All those fish that were gone or that were there the previous day were either gone or just there and, and not biting. So you got to really cherish those days when you actually do get them um, because you never know when they, they could be here one day, gone the next. You know, I love fishing back home in the Bay Area where I feel like I know the fish. I know what baits they're eating. I know when to fish for them. I know where to fish for them, stuff like that. I mean, it's still a challenge to get them. I know me, this is easy, but um, these are the kind of things that I really love doing. Going to a new place, I didn't want to ask anyone for spots or baits or anything. I just wanted to go out and figure it out. And uh, it's definitely a challenge. I, I wasn't sure if I was going to get them. I, I actually thought that it was most likely that I wasn't going to get them. Um, but, you know, it's a good, it's a good challenge to test your, your angling skills. And I think you'll be a better angler back home, anywhere you go you'll be a better angler if you, you test yourself like this, which is basically the same thing for everything I feel like in life, not just fishing. If you wanna get better at something, 
you know, challenge yourself, do something that you most likely won't succeed at and see if you can do it. Honestly, most of the time that you do that, even if you know the all the odds are stacked against you, as long as you don't give up and as long as you try your hardest and you know give it your best effort, you, you'll be surprised how many times you succeed even when all the odds are against you. So um, yeah, this wasn't an easy trip by no means, but I did my research, came up with a game plan and just you know persevered, just hard work, putting in the hours, got up early, stayed up late and you know, as you can see, it paid off. Awesome trip. Got my first Canadian steelhead as well as my, a new species. Um, just so many things checked off on this trip. I feel so lucky to be able to go and do this and share, the, share it with you guys so I can't thank you guys enough. Um, Canada was awesome. This is my first time ever being in Canada, not just fishing, just traveling here. It, was an, it is an awesome place and I hope I'm able to come back and hopefully do some fishing again soon. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching. This is another one of these longer style videos. And it seems like you guys liked the last one, so that's another reason why I wanted to do another one. So if you guys like this one, leave a like and leave a comment below. What, what do you want me to do next? Should I do another steelhead trip somewhere else? Or should I target another fish you know, in another country? It's been a fun trip. Appreciate you guys watching and uh, supporting the channel. Can't thank you guys enough. And um, until the next trip, Canada steelhead, baby. Check that one off the list. We'll see you guys next time.